Hi folks, it's good to be with you looking at the Gospel of Barnabas. And my name is Jason. Look at my website, jasonburnspreacher.com and Royal Blood Ministries website. Facebook and Twitter and Jason Burns Facebook and Twitter. We're looking at the Gospel of Barnabas and it's used often by Muslims uh, to prove Islam. So the Gospel of Barnabas. Uh, the Muslims often, this is by Norman Geisler, Muslims often cite the Gospel of Barnabas in defense of Islamic teaching. In fact, it is a bestseller in Muslim countries. Yusuf Ali refers to it in his com commentary on the Quran. Susan Anif, in her annotated bibliography on Islam, highly re recommends it, saying within it one finds the living Jesus portrayed far more vividly in the character with the mission with which he was entrusted than any other New Testament gospel has been able to portray him. It is called essential reading for any seeker of the truth. Typical of Muslim claims is that of Muhammad Atta Ruhahim, who insists that the Gospel of Barnabas is the only known surviving gospel written by a disciple of Jesus. It was accepted as canonical gospel in the churches of Alexandria up to 325 AD. Another Muslim author M.A. Youssef argues confidently that in antiquity and authenticity no other gospel can come close to the Gospel of Barnabas. So this is the Gospel of Barnabas, an article by Norman Geisler. Evidence for the authenticity is lacking. First of all, the earliest preference, the earliest reference to it comes from the 5th century work Dectorum Glessium in AD 492, but even this reference is in doubt. However, there is no original language manuscript evidence for its existence. There is no text tradition whatsoever. By contrast, the New Testament books are verified by over 5,300 Greek manuscripts. Second, L. Bevan Jones notes that the earliest form of it known to us is the Italian manuscript. This has been closely analysed by scholars and is judged to belong to the 15th or 16th century, 1,400 years time after the Barnabas. Even Muslim defenders of it, like Muhammad Urim, admit that they have no manuscript of it before the 1500s. Third, this gospel is widely used by Muslim apologists to year, today, yet there is no reference to it by any Muslim writer before the 15th and 16th century, but surely they would have used it had it been in existence. As Rag has observed, against the super supposition that the Gospel of Barnabas ever existed in Arabic, we must set the argument from the total silence about such a Gospel in the polemical literature of the Muslims. This has been admirably catalogued by uh, Stein Nieder in his monograph on the subject. Wright goes on to note that many Muslim writers who wrote books would no doubt have referred to such a work had it been in existence, such as Ibn Hassan, uh, and etc. Fourth, no father or church of the Christian church ever quoted it from the 1st to the 15th century. If the Gospel of Barnabas had been considered authentic, it more surely would have been cited many times by some Christian teacher during the long period of time, as were all other canonical books of Scripture. What is more, had this Gospel even been in existence, authentic or not, certainly it would have been cited by someone, but no father cited its supposed existence for over 1,500 years. Fifth, sometimes it confused with the first century epistle of Pseudo-Barnabas, AD 70-90, which is an entirely different book. In this way, Muslim scholars falsely allege there is support for it in early date. Mohammed al-Rahim confuses the two books, thus wrongly claiming that it was in circulation in the second and third century AD. This is strange error, since he admits that there are listed different books of the 66 books, etc. Some have mistakenly assumed that the reference to a gospel used by Barnabas referred to in the Apocryphal Acts of Barnabas, AD 478, was the Gospel of Barnabas. However, this is clearly false, as the quotation reveals. Barnabas, having unrolled the gospel which we have received from Matthew, his fellow labourer, began to teach the Jews by deliberation, omitting this emphasised phrase, the impression is given that there is a gospel of Barnabas. 6. The message of the apocryphal gospel of Barnabas is in complete, completely refuted by eyewitness first century documents that possess 5,000 manuscripts to support their 
authenticity. Namely, the New Testament, for example, is teaching that Jesus did claim to be the Messiah, etc. Seventh, non-Muslims should accept the authenticity of the Gospel of Barn. Sorry. Seventh, no Muslim should accept the authenticity of the Gospel of Barnabas since it clearly contradicts the Quran claim that Jesus was the Messiah. For it claims Jesus confessed and said the truth, I am not the Messiah. I am indeed sent to the house of Israel as a prophet of salvation, but after me shall come the Messiah. This is fat, flatly contradicted, contradictory to the Quran, which repeatedly calls Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, in Surah 519. Eighth, even Muslim scholars like Susan Hanif, who highly recommend it, have to admit that the authenticity of the book, quote, has not been unquestionably established and that it is believed to be an apocryphal account of the life of Jesus. Other Muslim scholars doubt its authenticity too, for the book contains anachronisms and descriptions of medieval life in Western Europe that's, that reveal that it was not written before the 14th century. For example, it refers to the year of Jubilee, coming every 100 years instead of 50 as it was practiced before the time, the Gospel of Barnabas 82. The papal declaration to change it to every 100 years was made by the church in AD 1343. John Gilchrist in his work titled Origins and Sources of the Gospel of Barnabas concludes that the only one solution can account for this remarkable coincidence. The author of the Gospel of Barnabas only quoted Jesus as speaking of the Jubilee year as coming every 100 years because he knew the decree of Pope Boniface. He added, but how could he know of this decree unless he lived at the same time as the Pope or sometimes afterwards? This is clear anachronism that compels us to conclude that the Gospel of Barnabas could not have been written earlier than the 4th century after Christ. The significant anachronism is the fact that the Gospel of Barnabas used the text from the Roman Catholic Latin Vulgate translation of the Bible 4th century AD. And even though Barnabas supposedly wrote it in the 1st century AD, other examples of anachronism include Vasso, who owes a share of his crop to this Lord, the Gospel of Barnabas, an illustration of medieval feudalism, a reference to wooden wine cask, etc. Ninth, Jomea provides a list of many mistakes and exaggerations in the Gospel of Barnabas. There are historical mistakes such as Jesus was born when Pilate was governor, though he did not become governor until 26 to 27 AD. There are also geographical mistakes, for example, chapter 20 stated that Jesus sailed Nazareth to Nazareth, even though it is not on the seashore. Likewise, the Gospel of Barnabas contains exaggerations such as seven, chapter 17 mentions 144,000 prophets and 10,000 prophets being slain by Jezebel. Tenth, according to Slump, Joma, Joma's studies showed many Islamic elements throughout the text that proved Beyond any doubt that Muslim author probably convert worked on the book. Fourteen such influences are noted, for example, Jomini notes that the word pinnacle of the temple, where Jesus said to have preached hardly a good place, was translated into Arabic by Dika, a platform used in a mosque. Also, Jesus is represented as coming only for Israel, but Muhammad for the salvation of the whole world. Finally, the denial of Jesus to be the Son of God is Quranic, etc. So, excellent little article there by Norman Giesler and I think a few other scholars there uh, on that so hope that's been a blessing to you on the Gospel of Barnabas don't believe the Muslims when they say the Gospel of Barnabas is more accurate than the four Gospels the Gospel of Ar uh, Barnabas is a medieval forgery that's the end of Islam for you folks God bless you